So I have to step back and do uh, not a retraction of my previous video, but a little more educational groundwork. I kind of went from one topic to another and went into judgments and things like this. So let me just step back and clarify a couple of things for the layman. Um, anybody, you know, I've done videos on Suboxone, I've done videos on Methadone. I've done videos on buprenorphine in past. The, the, I don't know if they're still even available now. I mean, I, no, not under this account, no, no, years ago when it was new and all that. Uh, and I will say, you know, I was doing like pros and cons to each and, you know, the, the long-term effects. And, you know, to this day, Suboxone, even though it's a raunchy tasting medication and all this stuff, um, it's really doesn't have any long term effects. Like methadone will deplete in minerals, certain minerals in the saliva, which will break down your teeth, you know, uh, make your bones brittle. Um, make you very, very high, extremely, extremely addictive, extremely synthetic heroin, you know. It was created in World War II as pain medication for the soldiers. That's what the methadone was created by the Germans, you know. Um, so Suboxone, yes, it is also controlled. And, you know, but it is not like uh, methadone. It's not, um, it's, I believe it is a Schedule 3, not Schedule 2. Schedule 1 would be heroin, which is illicit. In the United States, there are actually some other parts of the world that utilize heroin for pain management. Would you believe that? I'm telling you something true, something real. Um, but not here, and I'm so glad not here. Um, to me, there's no medicinal purpose for that. But this medication, Suffocate is uh, an injectable, uh, and it varies by level of dependency and history and body weight, uh, age. You know, there's many variables that account to dosing. Uh, but it's basically Suboxone in an injectable form, minus the naloxone or naltrexone component. So it's basically straight buprenorphine, which was how it was originally administered many moons ago before it was turned into a sublingual film. I remember the day when you went to the clinic to get a shot of buprenorphine for five days. It was used as detoxification for five days. And boy, did you get high. You did get high. <laughs> you know, you got this buzz for five days. And then they put you on a medication called naltrexone, which was to block, like an antabuse, to block the effects of alcohol. Same concept, except it's opiate, you know. But in the previous video, I went off on the tangent of how people associate stigma, you know. And, and it's true, it's valid. It's a valid point I made, but I said, let me go back and clean it up and just, you know, be a little more professional in how I present this, because... Um, it's a big deal. A lot of people are, die, are dying from it, have died from it, lost a lot of people young. You know, when I think of, for my own self, the amount of money that I spent on opiate because of my own dependency makes me shudder. I would be very well off if I could have back every dime that I put in my body chasing this phantom of a high, you know? Um, and most people would say that alcoholic, gambler, compulsive shopper, it's not just about this one particular drug, but this one particular drug seems to be the worst. We associate, you know, with the skid row bum on the corner and, <laughs> uh, 
but bums come in all forms, not just somebody who does a line or does a shot or takes a drink. So much more. That's just a symptom of this illness, you know. What would make a person want to do that to themselves? I've had people ask me that. What would make you want to do that you're an educated woman? And I, you're back, you're pursuing your PhD. What would make you entertain such a thing? You had the knowledge. The only thing I could honestly say is, I don't know.